Hello, this is Jim, W4JBM, and today we're going to look at the world's largest Zener diode. At least it's the largest Zener diode that I've ever personally come across. Um, I did do a quick Google search to see just how large Zener diodes uh, came and wasn't able to find anything any larger, I'll say that. Um, so this is a, a 1N2805B. Uh, it's up here, it's marked uh, 7.5, it's 7.5 volts, uh, 7.5Z. Uh, five. It's got the Motorola uh, Batwing. I, uh, I used to work for Motorola, so I have a certain fondness for that. Um, and actually, uh, when we start talking a little bit about what this might have been used for, um, it'll, it'll make sense why Motorola might have made something like this. Uh, so I was able to find a data sheet, and for the 2805B, it's uh, uh, rated Zener voltage of 7.5 volts, uh, and that's tested at 1.7 amps. And it's capable of carrying 6.6 .6 amps uh, of current. If you look at how normally uh, we would have connected this or built this into a circuit or, or use any kind of zener, um, you usually have the unregulated voltage coming in, going through some kind of dropping resistor, and then the, the zener, which gives you a regulated voltage, and then your, your load across that regulated voltage. Uh, this has two pins on the back. It's a uh, typical TO3 uh, case. It is made of, they call it alternate material. I assume that's for, for better heat, heat sinking um, uh, capabilities. Um, the two pins are actually connected together and the reason you might want to do that, if we, uh, if we assume one pin is up here, one pin is over here, uh, normally those are going to be shorted together so the circuit's going to be like the one we're looking at. But if I pull this out of the circuit, I'd break the connection here, break the connection here. Um, if I didn't do that and I pulled this out, I could see an over voltage situation on the, uh, the load resistor. So this, form, this basically is a, a type of safety uh, functionality that when I pull this out, uh, the load is disconnected from the supply so I won't see any kind of, uh, uh, of over voltage. Um, when I first came across this, I was thinking one of the things that, that a thought that hit me was that man, if you had something that needed one of these, um, you'd kind of be out of out of luck these days. Um, most of the time these days, uh, when we we need more uh, power than something like a, a normal half watt Zener can handle. Uh, we'll actually use a pass transistor and connect that with the uh, the Zener diode. We might use something like a Darlington pair up here to give us more current gain uh, to handle something, especially uh, something with uh, up in the 50 watt range. Um, but there's very little current. Uh, you know, the half watt uh, Zener in this circuit is uh, is is definitely sufficient. Um, so if you had one though where you needed something like this, what what could you do? Um, actually, there is one thing that came to mind, and not not everybody's ever tried it. But if you uh, if you take a series of, uh, of of just regular diodes and forward bias them, you drop about 0.6 volts uh, across each of them. Uh, so if I had say 12 of these, that would be 7.2 volts that would drop across all of them. Um, I am limited uh, in this situation. If you remember over here. Uh, on the data sheet we tested this, or this was rated at, uh, excuse me, uh, it was tested at 1.7 amps, but rated for 6.6 .6 amps. I'm just using regular 1N4000 series diodes here. Uh, those are rated for 1 amp, uh, so I'm, still, I'm a long ways from the 6.6 .6 amps. And even if I go to something like the, um, the 1N5400 uh, series, uh, of diodes, those are rated for three amps, uh, which is still quite a ways from the the 6.6 .6 amps uh, that this can handle. So, I, it's it's one of those things I can get there, um, but it's not uh, it's not trivial to do. So, why would Motorola make these? Why would anybody use these? Uh, if we take a, a look at how a lot of power supplies for two-way radios and other radios of that era were were designed uh, that used vacuum tubes. Um, a lot of times the, just the traditional transformer had 120 volt input, you had 1.6 volts maybe center tapped for the, uh, the heaters, you had uh, some kind of higher voltage winding or windings, you might have a couple of those. Uh, and you, you fed it with 120 volts, life was good. For mobile use, a lot of times what they would do is actually feed the heaters directly with the battery and then take a... Uh, um, 
the the 12.6 volt winding and use that as an input and basically not use the 120 volts for anything and what they would do is run that through uh, a device uh, called a, a vibrator um, sometimes you'll see them referred to as a chopper um, but basically it's a relay that that chatters back and forth and because of that they also got the name buzzbox uh, for the power supplies um, but we might have something like uh, zero volts then it would switch on <clears throat> excuse me and have 13.8 out switch off do this roughly 60 times a second um, so you've got 60 hertz and then they would take that feed that back into so instead of using this as an output use this as an input while we're feeding the heaters off of the battery directly we can use this as an input uh, use this chopped waveform uh, to come back in and get the the voltage uh, roughly um, the problem with this is that 13.8 uh, comes from uh, that that's the value that we would see uh, when the alternator uh, in the vehicle was running so if the alternator is flipping on and off uh, we would actually see the voltage vary between um, 12 point something and, and 13.8 which is a swing of 15 um, percent or so <coughs> enough to um, to be significant. So with the 7.5 volt Zener, what we could do is uh, actually take the, the output of that uh, original circuit that we looked at, so um, basically this, the load, and we would, normally we would, if we were using the, the full 13.8 across this 12.6 uh, volt input, we would ground one end and the other end would have 13.8 either on or off. If instead we ground the center tap and we take that 7.5 volts and feed it part of the time into uh, one leg of this and part of the time into the other leg and alternate back and forth again at 60 hertz. Uh, now we have a consistent 7.5 volts and a, that, that act, adds up to a 15 volt swing between them. And uh, we get a consistent output uh, of this. And when you take into account the fact this is a square wave, this is designed for 60 hertz sine wave, actually this 15 volt square wave input uh, will give you pretty close to the rated voltages um, out of there. So uh, yeah, again, that's, uh, there, there was an application for this. Uh, today, if we were doing something similar, we probably would use MOSFETs, uh, which have very low um, on resistances and very high off resistances so there's not a whole lot of power this thing was putting out 50 watts uh, which means that uh, it could get potentially hotter than uh, than my soldering iron gets uh, but back in these days uh, you know back in the, the late 60s early 70s uh, people weren't as worried about creating heat um, as maybe we are today um, you know zeners a uh, couple other just quick facts on them. Uh, I did find, uh, going through the same junk box, uh, an accumulation of parts that, uh, that I, I, I got that this came in. Uh, there was also this one. This is a, a stud mounted uh, diode, uh, 1N3015B. Uh, somebody tried to sell it for $15 at one point. Um, and the, the ratings, I did double check this, uh, are right here. It's a 200 volt Zener, uh, 10 watts. So not, uh, not the same 50 watts that this has, but uh, 10 watts is still pretty healthy. Um, 200 volts, I'm not sure what that was used for. Actually, that could be useful. Uh, I've got a lot of tube gear that I'm getting ready to build some power supplies or, uh, for. Um, so this one may actually see some use. Uh, the other thing about Zeners is that uh, even though we have uh, a fairly decent regulated output, uh, Zeners are, uh, they're not perfect, so as the, the, the current varies that's running through the Zener, you'll find that the voltage varies some, uh, usually not huge, so uh, in an application like we're talking about, that wouldn't, wouldn't matter too much. In a precision power supply, um, it might become an issue. Also, they do generate some noise. This is a, actually a, an HF noise source th that I built several years ago. It uses a Zener diode that is reverse biased. Uh, it's adjustable with this potentiometer. Um, and it's got two stages of transistor amplification and, and gives me a broadband noise source that, that uh, is good up at, at least through 20, 30 her, uh, megahertz and uh, usable up even, even higher than that. Normally powered by a 9-volt a battery. A lot of times one of the things I like to do is mark which, uh, which of these is the, the positive with something like just a blob of red paint so that if I use alligator clips and the, the bench power supply, I don't have to think about which clip goes to, uh, to which here. But uh, um, so that's uh, another application for Zeners. But anyway, I, uh, 
I, I, I just kind of found it interesting. Uh, I had never seen anything. Like I said, I, th this is by far the, the largest zener I've ever seen. Um, I've seen some that were rated um, up over a watt that were uh, small uh, encapsulated devices. But uh, you know, even the 10 watt is, is larger than anything I've come across in, uh, in the work that I've done. So I uh, wanted to share that. If, uh, if you found it interesting, uh, likes are always appreciated. Subscribes are always appreciated. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Thanks.